All right, so status reports um, shall now start. So let's start with Carl, KDC. Do you want to report any status? Yes. Um, so my status is that uh, we continue to have some really great discussions with a lot of people from WebWork and from MAA about kind of uh, collaboration opportunities and ways to think about uh, content in mathematics and particularly open content and how to organize and things like that. Um, and basically, otherwise, I'm just trying to uh, review a bunch of patches from different places, maybe write up some documentation for how to do symbolic stuff once Birchine uh, tells me how to do it, and uh, some other things like that. So it, it's exciting, but I sure wish that Maxima would build on Sigwin now. Totally not working. Hmm. Yeah. All right. Uh, Bob? Uh, I've been extremely busy, but I don't know what I've accomplished. <laughs> <laughs> other, than, other than to make everybody else productive. Well, I've, I've yeah. felt that way many days. <laughs> uh, so, not only we have positively reviewed the Russian translation of the tutorial, but nice. we got merged overnight. Oh, great. Nice. Uh, and uh, I have finished a patch for proper processing of uh, strings in uh, Vatic, so it's ready for review. And uh, since I'm done with that, I now was fixing bugs in uh, matrix contracts. Cool. You can use that. Right, I guess. Uh, me? So, um, I'm going to show a quick demo of something. Here, video this. So, um, I heard that published interacts, that kind of phrase, if there's a lot. It would be nice if you could publish a worksheet and have interacts actually work in a worksheet that's published, so you don't have to make it your own. And I sort of remembered that a couple of years ago I hired somebody to do this and they didn't quite get their code into Sage. So I kind of wondered if they had done anything useful. And um, there's this ticket 7908 and it says implement published interacts needs work. But then I was looking at it today and it has um, an S package. So I tried installing the S package into a copy of Sage and then trying it out. So I made a worksheet and then I published it. And I'm not logged in or anything. I'm just looking at a published worksheet and I can the interacts just appear. If I refresh the page or, view, or visit this page with another web browser, then it allocates a new session for that particular page, evaluates all of the interacts, and then you can interact with them. So as you can see, you can change wow. things. Why are you interacted? There you go. So I'm interacting. So you couldn't do this the first time you did it, but the second time you can? Yeah, so in Sage, in Sage right now, if you create a worksheet, and you put interacts in the worksheet, and then you click on the publish button and right. point somebody at the published worksheet. If you want them to use the interacts, but they have to log in and code. edit a copy of that worksheet or install a copy of that worksheet into their own right. copy of Sage. With this um, patch, with that particular version of the notebook, um, and this is you know this was made like 17 months ago or something, uh, you could just publish a worksheet with interacts in it, and any random person could just visit the website and start using the interacts without having to do, you know, make an account or anything at all. So this would have not been feasible had, except for the work yesterday, right? No, because this literally, any person could have just installed this stuff on 7908 right. any time during the last, I don't know, 17 months and <laughs> given yeah, this demo. So. <laughs> what is that? Anybody was, visiting a published worksheet now is effectively have logged in and, done a, and, and has a worksheet session open, right? Yeah. Which is, you can view which, it that way. Which, but this there's no not been feasible at all. Yesterday, no. Before yesterday. Right? Exactly 17 yeah. months ago, I oh, could have given were, exactly the same. He means in terms of actually scalability. Yeah. I'm talking about. Oh, so you yeah, could have yeah. put it on some random right. server, but not on Sage yeah. Vita. Yeah. Another thing is um, Sage and Vita, or it continues to work. Woohoo! <laughs> 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 it's actually running. So the point is, so, so the thing is, there's an absolutely massive patch that depends on many other things. Fortunately, all the dependencies are in Sage. But there's this huge 400 kilobyte patch, <laughs> and it um, has a lot of. It appears to have a lot of stuff in it. Um, but Mike has been sifting through it all day, and he'll say some more, in, maybe in just a minute, about the feasibility of actually putting this code in the current version of the notebook, which is dramatically different than what the notebook was, you know, 17 months or 14 months ago when this patch was posted. So uh, the upshot of all of this is that I cross my fingers that maybe by the end of the Sage days. Um, it will be the case that the new Flask notebook server allows published interacts, which I think will be really useful. And you could also imagine not only having them be right here, but taking a little snippet of HTML and JavaScript, pasting it into your website, and then having this appear embedded in a website, independent of Sage. So, 
So um, is this just attached to the notebook, or did it make yeah. changes to Sage as well? Just the notebook. Thanks. Makes absolutely, it doesn't touch the Sage library at all. Cool. Mike, do you want to add something? Because uh, you're the one that actually understands what's going on. Well, more than I do with like this. Yeah, I mean, so this this is just like a huge patch, and it does lots of different things, um, which makes it harder to review. For example, there, like, I don't know, like at least. 20% of the hunks of the diff are just like making things that were, you know, over 80 characters, like split up into two lines and like take care, like insert some extra spaces and various things. So I'm just going through that diff and splitting it up into a bunch of sort of logical pieces. Um, you know, there's one patch in there that sort of reworks. Uh, the class hierarchy for cells and tech cells. It's really useful that he's listing all these because several of the things he's about to list are things that you might think of doing during this workshop, and some of them Mike was actually planning to do during this workshop. Um, and another thing that did, for example, was changed all the double underscore attributes for cells to be single underscore. Um, and then there's another sort of logical set of um, changes in this patch which get rid of um, like when Sage sends messages back and forth between the client um, and the server using Ajax, basically what it does is if it wants to send a list of things, it has strings for those and then has like some special like triple underscore Sage separator triple underscore and then you split it back. And so part of this patch goes through and makes those all use JSON messages. Um, so and why was that all in one patch? Huh? Yeah. Is there a reason why that all should be in one patch? <laughs> no, no. no. so I'm going through and stripping out those changes, so that can be one like set of diffs, so it's easier to review and see what's going on. Um, so yeah, I'm just working my way through those, and hopefully this evening we'll have something cool. And so, so it's easier to see like what exactly are the changes that needed to make uh, published in our work. Because it seems like a, a very small percentage of this patch does that. So, so anyways, there's a sort of a gold mine here that is being mined. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next, uh, Kiran. Um, my status is that I just got here and <laughs> I want to find out what's new with the notebook. Okay. Cool. Great. Good. Thank you. Sure, go for it. Thanks. Oh, yeah, your GeoGebra demos. Oh, GeoGebra, yes. Mm. So, Projects. So, uh, GeoGebra integrations right there. Okay, and so I put. Um, Okay, so this is on uh, Flask, and um, yeah, so the height didn't quite work on this. The height, just zoom, you want to change the zoom? You mean height. Height. Height, oh yeah. That's a bug. I wish somebody would fix it. Oh, this goes to your, uns it's, that's, it's signed, and so that's, right, so I, I have to say yes on this computer. Okay, and here's the help on iframe. Uh, but here's 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 the so iframe is now a method oh, wow. um, under HTML, and this is just a sample GeoGebra um, file from the GeoGebra people. And um, GeoGebra is if you haven't used it, it's just it's nice. Everything moves around, um, and. The, the cool thing is, though, that um, I placed a an empty GeoGebra um, worksheet, so it's just the, the interactive part of it, and you can uh, do whatever you want with it. Um, you know, all the, the GeoGebra kinds of things. But what's what's quite cool is is that you can go and save this onto your local machine, or you can read things that are on your local machine. So that wow. works well. But I would really like if anyone here. Um, has some ideas and can talk to me today before I finish this. That's oh, this is one of those artifacts that's bad. Is that there's nice communication between the GeoGebra screen um, using JavaScript with HTML. 
so that you can change the, you know, that point to red and, or to blue or whatever. Um, what can you do that's nice? Right, you can, so here's the example. I can type in over here, um, P equals uh, point uh, one comma one, and it should put point P right there. So it's done that. But it would be really nice if, if you could do something in um, Sage and send it to this um, GeoGebra screen and go back and forth. Yeah. Okay. Uh, since we've uh, had to deal with iframes a little bit, that may be a real problem Okay. if it's inside an iframe. You run into cross-site stuff. Yeah, you run into serious, serious issues with set, getting the JavaScript across site. Okay. If we can get a way to embed it in a div, mm -hmm. which means we'd have to have that, which shouldn't be a big deal, we just have to, we'd, we'd have to include the GeoBra applet uh -huh. as part in the like we do with JMOL. Yeah, we'd have to include it like JMOL, and uh -huh. then you put it in a div, and then you ought to be able to access all the JavaScript stuff. Okay. Uh -huh. So, so the, the issue is that you cannot have it local, right? Is that, is that the, or? No, so the it's, issue it's, is that if it's in an iframe, it's essentially a, another session. So getting the JavaScript to talk across sessions. Mm. Uh, uh, that's how works, and it's not a problem. doable. You are doing that. Graph? It, it, no, the old one. The new one uses a div, but the old one is iframe. You are, because, I mean, we it's, had it's some, part people of the did sort of get it to work with JMOL, but we had a lot, uh, we basically have tried to avoid the frame because it's very hard to aim it at the right. <laughs> I mean, essentially, you're, it's essentially like trying to find, look at something that's on another web, another page, but opened in the same browser. So, so the reason those buttons are working is because they're in the same iframe. They're, they're in the same way, yeah. So, yeah. so that's that Well, that's the fun. easiest way. I mean, it is possible. Yeah. We did sort of have it working, but it's like, uh, we finally settled on don't, you know, just try to avoid this. This is the kind of thing I was suggesting for JMOL, was that you just, JMOL comes up with a couple of buttons in it like this that would allow you to do right. mm -hmm. local things. Um, the other possibility is this might work because this is, this is an unsigned applet, or is this, this is this one. this one is assigned. There are there are unsigned. Ones. If you use the unsigned one, it might work. No, the unsigned one I think is worse. Is worse. Yeah. Uh, okay. I, I, but I may be wrong. Yeah, no, I just I, know that we've sort of avoided it. I, I run into this too, and the solution was to, to simply uh, have my own the, the WebWork server serves the JoJo uh, applet. Yeah. yeah. And then and then and then you don't have to worry about it. So I kind of forgot what all the issues were. Yeah. Okay. And I don't know the details. So one last thing about GeoGebra that's, that's quite nice is that when, when you use sliders, and I don't have a demonstration, things change um, as you push the slider, whereas in Interact, right, you, you move, well, you move the, slide, the, the slider, right? It's, yeah. It's a round trip to the server. Right. Yeah. And you don't have that here. Right. So anyway, that, that, that's where I'm at. And I guess I'll be here tomorrow morning, but, but then, then I take off. So anyway, it's, it, it's, it's been great. Yes? Yeah. Well, one thing, this is a, maybe a little bit off the topic, but this JSX graph type stuff, if you are emitting that and using that, that's all local, and that you do have these smooth slider things. It behaves very much like uh, GeoGebra. Okay. I'd like to make the suggestion that you try, see if you can get a server, let's put a copy of GeoGebra on that, and let's just start okay. by, see proof of method, can you, Write, can we write a function that just says load GeoGebra mm -hmm. and just brings up brings up the app, when you execute it, it just puts it in a div. If you can do that, then you can talk mm -hmm. about just okay. about all the other integration. That's right, and, and then you can put off what, what you do with the GeoGebra on a different server, you can deal with that later. Mm -hmm. yeah. after, after you know that you care enough to put them together. Yeah. That's a good idea. All right, maybe we'll try that after this. Cool. Wait. Uh, so I've been continuing trying to do read through Python, learning even more than I learned a couple days, and I'm starting to do interacts right now. Cool. So, I'm um, still uh, trying to learn HTML. Um, I've been trying to emulate other websites um, and building my own. View um, source. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Command option U. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, That's also, how a lot of people learn HTML. Yeah. Um, and also working more with Sage in the Interact. Um, cool. Yeah.
Uh, so I've been working a fair bit over the last day on Prime Pi method. Um, I've done a rewrite and uh, was about 30% faster than what's currently in there at the beginning of the week, and now it's about three times as fast as what's in there. So um, that's going well. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, to get our wiki answers three times as fast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Status? Um, I'm new to this, really. I, this is, I guess You're this less is new than Kiron. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. So today was my first day showing cool. up. Um, our well, first, first day. What do you want to accomplish? What do you uh, want to learn? learn I thing? guess I wanted to learn more about Sage and more about the development process. Um, and I guess if I can, then by the by the tomorrow I, I might come in with a laptop and actually be able to do something yeah, interesting. Yeah, laptops are common. <laughs> uh, Jason? Um, I worked on the last uh, penultimate bug for MathJax, getting MathJax in the notebook. How do you know? Because there's only one problem left. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we know there's at least one problem left and, and it really looks like it's the last little thing and Rob thinks he knows where, where the problem is. Um, it does wow. change JavaScript, so I'm curious how it affects what Mike is doing, but it's really easy changes. And then, uh, quick question, how many people are planning on being at MathFest? Uh, I'm responding to the thing right now. Oh, good. So you're going to be here. So we had long talks today, and uh, we're culminating in what will probably be a joint uh, Sage WebWork uh, reception oh, great. Friday night is, at wait, MathFest. What is MathFest? It's the MAA National Meeting in Lexington oh. and the first week of August. Oh, cool. So, uh, so if you're listening, email <laughs> Sage at you or something like that and let us know you're there. It's helpful to know who's going to be there. But we'll have a short demonstration and, and maybe... Maybe a reception we're hoping Maybe a or reception or room or whatever. I don't know. The idea was just started today and, and it looks like we might be able to skate in over the way. 20 wire. minutes ago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Get the book. Okay. So anyway, lots of conversations about questions? things like that. Sorry, can you, can you take okay. the front? Yeah. Yeah, Michael says. Uh, Volker? <coughs> Hopefully, the last bug in the Atlas package that you see, we were installing this package installed, and then we were on the Pinac uh, Infinity Sandlink, and then bring that together with the machine's uh, print order, and then we hope to make a review of everything with the data. Oh. Nice. And it should fix a couple of bugs. So I found more infinity handling bugs on the side of Pinac than I fixed them. Uh, I'm making progress. Sweet. Okay. Jason? I mean, Ryan? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, I've been looking at some patches um, and reviewing other patches. Mm. I've been looking at a patch for the aspect ratio and figure size Good. for Matplotlib, kind of an old patch. Um, and also looking at the Mercurial uh, Sage package upgrade. Ah, I like think that Keshef was looking at before. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. And other than that, I reviewed the iframe patch by nice. Bruce. Nice. And the LUD composition for regular matrices by Rob Beezer. Cool. So. Excellent. All right. Uh, so we gave the web work presentation yesterday. We've been talking to a bunch of people about web work and making some joint things about what to do with Sage and web work at, at MathFest. Um, we're still stuck on one. There's two bugs where we're blocked on. One is the, the bug about uh, uh, getting web work into Sage. We've got it there, but then once we've got it there, when you press the button, then it should make a round trip back to web work again. It's not quite working. We think it's base 64 incompatibility, but we're not sure. Mm. Jason and I are working on that. <laughs> and then the other one is working in the other direction. We still have that iframe, uh, the, the iframe problem. Huh. We'll have to work around. Hopefully we'll hear from Ira about that. Uh, we'll hear from Ira about that, right. Oh, yeah. So okay. They're working with Jason on this. So. So Mike basically summarized what we've been doing, the Weber presentation, and fooling around trying to figure out um, where the incompatibility is between Base64 encoding and decoding between uh, us, web work, and this the notebook in Sage. Mm. Oh, yeah, we did a prep workshop yesterday, too. We did a prep workshop oh. yesterday. <laughs> nice. Nice. Okay. Yeah, I did the prep workshop yesterday as well, and 
worried about my talk this morning. That's over. Um, did my first ticket uh, thing, and I've been looking through other tickets. Cool. Mission. I mainly looked at the printing order for the symbolic expressions yeah. and answered a lot of questions from Volker and other people. <laughs> while Volker found all kinds of inconsistencies and <laughs> all kinds of parts of sage and okay. mainly symbolics. Uh -huh. And uh, we were hoping to have the orderings ready for review by now. I guess it's almost there. There are some cosmetic issues which I'm working on right now. Cool. Uh, what is this ordering? Just curious. Can you give a five second description uh, of this? Ordering of symbolic expressions is inconsistent in that drive. It's not a strict weak ordering, so it sometimes makes Sage crash. That has to change. <laughs> And when that changes, well, it has to be correct, it has to look good, but this will affect all kinds of things in Sage. And we'll have to change doctors everywhere and so on. But for now, we are trying to make sure that it works properly. So the underlying GNAC order is on memory locations on the front. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, That's for speed reasons, it was the memory location. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yesterday I finished the uh, waste latte, which I can use now from Sage, and uh, yes. I proceeded a bit with uh, the translation of the note to Greek, and uh, today I started my first uh, symbolic bug. Cool. Not introducing. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Mike, do you have anything, like, other stuff uh, that you want to report? No. Okay. All right. what I wanted to do with the single cell interact so now you can uh, dynamically specify interacts uh, or you can dynamically specify like a number of interacts and what type they are and stuff wow. uh, and now I'm working on the uh, I'm working on making it so that you can embed the single cell page into another website like nice Right. All right. I think that I have successfully extracted Jmol from the notebook and the Flask version. It's still I gave, I'm not working on the other version anymore. And so maybe I'll get back to fussing with improvements. But for the time being, on the projects page are instructions on how, with the Flask notebook, to set up the new JMOL with it extracted from the notebook, so the notebook is independent of JMOL mm -hmm. on the projects page. And I need somebody to test it on their setup and make sure we didn't miss anything, and then we can fold it into the Flask project, as well as there are a couple of pat little patches because it moved, moved that have to go into Sage. Okay. Because it affects the command line stuff as well because we moved JMOL. A different directory. Right, right. What's the ticket number again? Or um, is it just up there on the wiki? It's up there. It's okay. up there. On the, it's really, a, it's been divided up into a couple of things because some affects the note, yeah. some affects the thing. So in the pro, on the projects page, I've described which tickets, and there is an overall enhancement of um, get, or getting JMOL, the new JMOL, into the Flash notebook ticket that lists the separate tickets. Got it. In Got one it. place. And it's all linked there. And I tried to write a short description of how to set this up on a Flask notebook installation. And I'd love somebody to try it. Okay. Because it works for me, but nobody else has a chance to try it. Sweet. Okay, so I continue to work on the REST to Sage Worksheet um, project. So there was uh, one file I was using that was really poorly documented. So uh, since I, I needed it, I had to understand the class, so I, I spent like five to six hours and now it's 100% uh, duct tested, so nice. this is nice. And this morning I spent some time uh, writing uh, some HTML page on my website uh, explaining what I did uh, this week. And I posted a link on the uh, day 31. Can I just show? Yeah, go for it. Okay. I think there's a tab already open. And Uh, 
<laughs> Maybe you close the it close that tab to the right. Pull up a whole new browser. I don't know. Don't we love Java? It doesn't matter. There's the iframe method tab. Yeah, the yeah. Yeah, kill that tab. Just click in the applet. Okay. Yes. <laughs> yeah, now we'll look forward to that. Okay, so I, post, I posted uh, some links here. So this this page links to my website, and I explained everything when I did. So the command are there. Here uh -huh. is a nice. example of a REST file. Like This is the same syntax as the documentation. So this can now be included in, directly in the notebook, well, on my computer at least. Um, and uh, by adding only this to the ref file, uh, this allows to use Magjax inside of the, nice. the HTML. So this is one example. So if I go on, on sin, oh, well, I, oh, I have to click, right? Oh, well, yeah, you right clicked and showed it, yeah. Or, yeah. So this is nice. And we can only, uh, from this link, well, it goes back to the rest. This link can be uploaded directly in the notebook. So this is nice, I think. And uh, one last thing. I added here a link. So this, is, this was not done by me, but by Franco Sariola. So for those who are using uh, Vim, there is a uh, it's possible to uh, to have the syntax highlighting for the, the code, but as well for the documentation, which is in REST. So the input get uh, underlying output example, and there's colors here in the, the block. So that's nice. So this page explains how to uh, to make to configure it on your computer. That's it. Cool. So this morning I worked on this page. Nice. Right, Kashev? Um, I've been doing a few things. Um, I fixed my first symbolics bug, which was nice. We which it help. turns out isn't quite fixed. I just oh, really? Yeah, the, the <laughs> well, original, but, but it's really me. close. You're, you're yeah. All right, so yeah. And, uh, Carl Dieter, of course, helped me review it and found some bug which I fixed, and I guess now he's found another one. No, somebody else did. Oh, really? Oh, well, okay. And Burchin helped me a lot, of course, and uh, now I'm also looking at another one from 2009 or so. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, the <coughs> bug is kind of an inconsistency in the behavior that hasn't never been resolved and never nice. caused anyone much trouble, but, well, we should probably fix it. And um, what else did I do? Yeah, I've Lots been trying to... advising, right? Yeah, I've also been doing material consulting again. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of my rule, I guess. Uh, another thing is the graph that I was trying to add, the Balaban 11 cage, is finally finished in all of its glory. The what? The Balaban 11 cage. I don't know if I'm pronouncing the name right, but okay. it's a uh, ticket. What's the ticket number? Uh, hang on a second. That minimum for degree in girth. That yeah, kind of a that cage. One. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, How many track vertices? 91, 36. How many um, vertices? 112. Oh. And girth 11. It's the unique graph of. He added by hand. Yeah, which I added by hand. <laughs> I had a diagram that someone had oh drawn in God. the Along with the positions. <laughs> yeah, it looks really nice, too. It looks like a flower with eight petals and this giant ring in the middle. Wow, anyway, cool. So, yeah, I just need to add some doc tests to that, and that should be up on a ticket pretty soon. Um, nice. Other than that, I also fixed a bug in the uh, notebook, and I'm trying to chase down some documentation building warnings and errors which are coming from the new Flask notebook. Mm. Um, so... Cool. Yeah, not having much left there, but... Let me just refix some of those. Oh, all right. So I've been pulling from Rado's repository. Yeah, I don't Oh, yeah, and Track's repository now contains the updated... Ah, uh, nice. Stage and you're going to keep it up to date? Yes, and I will keep it up Sweet. to date. Sweet. At least into the foreseeable future. Nice. Um, so I merged some books. Bug fixes. Um, <laughs> yeah, merge some bugs. No. <laughs> uh, so there, there have been. Uh, what happened is since January, there has been uh, the old notebook is still getting is getting some uh, patches into it by a release manager and last package and so on. So what I did is I merged that into the Flask notebook, and uh, yeah, 
Other than that, I fixed the uh, old bug that somebody reported recently on Sage Notebook about uh, sharing a data file between worksheets. Hmm. That mm -hmm. apparently hasn't been working for at least, I don't know. It, it wasn't changed during the Flask rewrite, so it probably was never working in the last year or so. Hmm. You know, that's fixed now. So I'll be going over the other issues on the Google code trying to fix those. Cool. All right, I think that's everybody. So we're done. <laughs>